Yeah, I, I have someone close to me who um, I, I talked with recently, and they've been having some tough times with anxiety, and it started earlier on in life. And they're actually a young a young adult, um, and really, it it kind of like it's 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 a bit of a strange phobia um, around vomiting. Okay. And that can actually like make it even worse, but it's not just about that. Um, it's kind of this the undercurrent of anxiety patterns at play. Um, and then the kind of the phobia will really send them for a loop or send it out of control. Um, that's like the extreme form of the anxiety pattern at, at play. Uh, but yeah, what what have you done in the past as far as you know, when people talk to you about feeling anxiety, how do you uh, deal with that? How do you overcome it? Like, what what's your perspective around that? Mm. Uh, it's interesting. So there's there's like the traditional definition of anxiety, which is more of like when it becomes a pattern. Right. It's like, oh, I have anxiety. It's this pattern of stressing out about something. But I've always used the word anxiety a little differently. And so just for the purposes of this conversation, my definition when I talk about anxiety versus overwhelm or stress, uh, stress or overwhelm is where something is perceived to be in your control and you're stressed about it uh -huh. versus anxiety, something's completely out of your control. I'm sure there's probably better terms for this that are less confusing, but like when I think of anxiety, I think of, you know, the people who are stressed out that Trump is president and like the world's going to end because of this thing that I can't control at all. Like, uh -huh. Sure, you can go vote, you can do all the things, but like ultimately you have no control over it versus like stress or overwhelm. There's a perception that I have control over it. I could have studied harder. I could have done more work. I could have put more effort into it. I could have or should you have I more this? influence, you have more influence on the outcome of the situation. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. You, you have more influence to the outcome, you know. The outcome's still out of your control. Like that's the 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 cosmic joke of all of it is like nothing is in our control. You could work as hard as possible and still, you know, life can take something from you. So or you get I, stumped you, by a question on a test that you're stressing out about that you didn't foresee, you didn't prepare for. Just, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. It just blindsides you. Totally. And, you know, the first thing I do with whoever I'm talking to is I, I try to separate those two things out, right? Like, is this something that you feel like you've had an influence over or is this something that like is a hundred percent out of your control? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from that point, right? Like I'm a big plan. I'm, I'm a big uh, proponent of breaking things down and like unraveling them or unwrapping them versus trying to add solutions and suggestions on top of to try to fix the problem. Right. Basically what I'm trying to do is show people that there is no problem, right? The problem is just created in your mind. Yeah. So that's kind of my, my main approach in terms of anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And, and I think, you know, when you bring phobias into the mix, generally like the brain is really good at, imagining outcomes to then avoid especially imagining like undesirable outcomes to then avoid them or keep you safe and protect you for like that's what the deepest parts the oldest parts of your brain are designed to do it's the fight or flight system so like when you have experiences that you know, you don't want to have again, it could be so for instance, like if, if it's a phobia of throwing up, it's a, it could have been by, like this really painful experience, physically painful experience. Maybe there's embarrassment because you threw up in front of, a you know, your class of, of you know, 
sure. students, right? Like, or in front of the girl you have a crush on, or like, it could be so physical pain, emotional pain or embarrassment. Now it's like, it's really, that's a very intense moment that's wired into your brain. So now the second that something triggers, it could be a stomach ache <laughs> that you're like, oh no. And it's almost like an unconscious response, right? Like now I have this fear of throwing up uh, because last time I remember that it had, it was very bad. And then I got embarrassed. So like, mm -hmm. I see anxiety as <clears throat> imagining these things, which may or may not happen, but generally it's the extreme of it. Like you're imagining the worst case scenario outcomes of it. It's like the classic tool we always right. talk about, don't spill the milk. If you're worried, if you have stress, if you have anxiety about spilling milk, you know, you're, and so to bring it into the example, that first glass of milk, that child's going to pour that first glass of milk, you're thinking, oh, um, I could knock the glass over. It could overflow. I could trip and fall. I could, and if you're an overachiever, it's not 50 ways it can happen, 200 plus crazy, like, you know, a, a meteor can rip through the ceiling right now and, and rip the picture out of my hands. I have to worry about meteors. And it's like these right. crazy out of this world things that are generally like never going to happen. But our brain's trying to imagine all of it so that we can be aware of it and look out for it. And now it's we're you know, it's engaging cortisol and adrenaline like we're in this adrenaline state trying to be super vigilant and aware of these things. So that, that's which the irony of the whole situation is now you've put yourself in a physical, like a physiological environment where those things will probably happen or have a higher chance of happening because now your hands are sweaty <laughs> right now. You're probably going to spill the milk. Now you're shaking. Now you're, yeah. you know, you're focused on, on all these other things. So like you just basically created that negative outcome at a higher possibility of yeah. actually happening. Especially if that's a visualization that's happening, right? Like if you just are visualizing all the ways that you could spill milk, hmm. yeah, you're actually enhancing, ironically, enhancing the probability that those things could happen. Right, like think about you, this. Yeah. Like you look at this this vomiting story, right? You get this, maybe it's a tummy sensation, right? Uh-oh. And then all of that stuff comes floor, you know, flooding in. Mm -hmm. Well, what then happens? <laughs> then, you know, your, your heart rate rises, you do start sweating, you know, your the blood's going away from your stomach that was probably helping it digest in the first place. Yeah. And now it's like, it, it has more of a chance to feel even worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> needing to purge the body because like, oh, purge whatever's in there because the, you know, it's bad. Like, you're yeah. setting yourself up for this it's a self-perpetuating self-fulfilling kind of prophecy almost right exactly no, at least exactly. as it relates to to vomiting in particular because yeah there's physiological like stress anxiety upsets your stomach and it like that creates yeah. that like downward spiral and you can find that in any situation yeah like people who are you know freaked out about losing their job well, now they're coming from a place of like anxiety and scared yeah. and they're emanating this like negative energy of fear. And now they're not confident. So they're not portraying confidence. And now mm. you're not portraying confidence day to day in your job. Right. Well, it's probably going to lead to a loss of faith from your supervisors because now you're this unconfident, anxious person who's like not fun to be around and is like constantly worrying, you know, in meetings. And it's like it can you know, go down that path, not saying yeah. that it, it does lead to it, but you've just put yourself in a higher probability yeah. of having that negative outcome. Actually, you know, right, because that's how you show up in that kind of emotional state is way different. Light years different than the confident at peace you know um calm whatever adjective you want to use version of you that would show up differently that would maybe you know your your boss or your colleague would have more faith versus they feel your 
anxiety. They feel your apprehension. They feel that, you know, can, maybe they're wondering, can I really trust this person? Can, you know, well, right. they're not sure. Am I, you know, how can right. I be sure? Yeah. yeah so, and, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, just to kind of recap the your definition or the definition of this anxiety or stress, you know, it's seeing a possible future that has a disadvantageous outcome. You know, it's like it's seeing a future where you're not OK, seeing a future right. where things, you know, not only didn't go your way, but you're in a bad position because of it. Right. Which, again, is well-meaning, right? Like your brain is doing its job or old software, old, you know, old you is designed for safety and comfort so it's it's trying to protect right but in doing that <laughs> um we know it's not the most effective way of going about producing the desired outcome which is really now so to like now that we've defined anxiety and stress like what how do we stop that how do we change that pattern that thought process like simply you could just change the visualization of spilling milk to pouring carefully and, and getting the outcome that you want. So this is my desired you know, outcome. This is what I want to have happen versus if you're so fixated on the what you don't want to have happen and what could go wrong and you know that bad place that you might end up at, well, well what would it look like on the flip side? So that's like, I think, kind of the very first fundamental step is how you can switch the the thought process yeah yeah I, along those lines right like this is a future that hasn't happened yet and you've created this scenario in your head of a negative outcome the positive outcome is just as likely right like in both situations, you don't know the answer. Like you don't know what's going to happen. You can't see the future. Mm -hmm. But in this one scenario, when you're focused on the don't spilling, you're focused on that away pattern, you're focused on what could go wrong, right? Just like we said, all the energy aligns in that direction. You know, the old adage of energy flows where attention goes or focus goes. Yeah. Versus to your point of like, well, what if we just reframe? What if we turn your head to this direction of what could go right? It's equally, you know, a possibility and it, it hasn't happened <laughs> yet. You know, we uh -huh. don't know the future. Um, but if you put all your attention there, then what's possible? Right. Well, it's kind of like the example of when you're riding a bike, right? If you're looking at the pothole versus you're looking at you know to the left of the pothole or where you want the bike to go right like that's mm -hmm. kind of the classic example of just shifting where you're looking shifting, yeah, object fixation yeah shifting to what you want to happen and that's engaging different neurochemistry right like you're thinking of now back to the milk example i could walk slowly i could pour slowly i could hold the two hands and you're thinking of all the ways and it it even just what it's producing biologically or neurochemically, like you're not flooding your body with cortisol and adrenaline, you know, maybe it's even dopamine because your mind's seeing the possibility, you're seeing the potential rewards and like you're, you're engaging your brain differently, literally. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It, when you think of, say the dating scene, right? Like I have tons of stories from, you know, when I was in the dating scene many, many years ago. And the days when I went out to try to meet someone, you know, the days when I, I went to try to impress someone, I'd shower, I'd, you know, put on the you know cologne or, you know, some probably cheap Axe body spray or something like that. I'm from Jersey. So hair gel, Axe body spray, button down shirt. Uh, <laughs> It was this, like, also the little bit of hint of desperation in there, right? Like, I'm trying too hard. I'm going out. I'm trying to make this happen versus the times when, you know, I'd be out surfing all day and I wouldn't shower after the beach. And I'd be in my board shorts that were, like, still kind of half wet 
and a ratty old t-shirt and like throw a hat on and, you know, go out. And then I'm so confident I'm exuding this, like I'm relaxed, I'm peaceful. I just spent, you know, last two hours in a flow state surfing and just like, I wasn't there to really make anything happen. And then that's usually when I'd meet someone or that's usually when, you know, I get a phone number, or a, a contact, something like that. And it's like, like what was different? You know, like I wasn't trying here. I was trying here. But when you look at it energetically, I was in this place of relaxed, calm, exuding confidence, exuding like I have everything I need. There's no lack in me. There's no trying too hard. It's like just and and that was unconscious. I did unconsciously. I did both of those things. Right? Uh-huh. Um, but seeing that and trying to pull it into a, a future situation like this. OK, let's say it's the vomiting thing. If I focus on, you know, like. How many minutes of my life do I spend vomiting versus not vomiting? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a really small percentage. How many times does this actually happen? Not many. Like you start building that confidence and then you can switch to something that's really productive of like, when was the last time I did something and it worked out amazingly? Oh, it was this time, right? Oh, it was great. I felt amazing. You know, your shoulders drop, right? Mm -hmm. The tension in your jaw lessens up, right? You take probably deeper breaths in and because you're taking deeper breaths in like, your stomach settles down a little bit, you relax, you feel lighter. And then all of a sudden, just by focusing in that direction, you're, you're changing, changing the course of the future, right? You're changing your physiology and that's actually, you know, altering future results. Right. Yeah. I love that. And I think that speaks to a deeper level um, or, you know, program at work or belief system at work, which like, I think at a fundamental level, like generally you can look at anxiety stemming from this kind of, and I'm, you know, generalizing here, but like this belief that I'm not going to be okay if something goes wrong. Like I'm it's it's going to suck. I'm not going to be able to figure out. I'm, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be traumatizing. It's going to be the end of the world. Which is really it says there's not a solid belief. Installed right and implanted that a belief in yourself, really, like a belief that no matter what, you'll figure it out, like you'll be OK. And um, so I'm trying to. The, the person I'm referencing, I know very well, and I know that they had gone through a lot of challenges right out of the womb. They mm-hmm. were born premature, um, and they had to deal with a lot of adversity, like early on in life. And so I think even part of that anxiety it even comes from that. Like, sure. it's a kind of a subconscious thing, but it's that very experience like not only did they get through it and they i mean they could have died Uh, like it was you know pretty severe premature um you know birth that like not a lot of people come out of that so that alone like if you believe that if you feel that if you know if you see the strength that it takes for a little infant to have to go through all of that and then be thriving be be a healthy person you know now years down the road like really you can't get through whatever life's gonna throw your way i mean ultimately all of us uh, if you're listening to this like you're here you've made it through whatever life has thrown your way yeah it, it sucks having your leg broken to reference another popular tool that we have yeah it can be painful when unforeseen you know painful things happen but the the benefit of that is it 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 creates callous it creates strength it creates this adversity and especially when you have the right mindset or you know you do the rehab on the leg that was broken to work through it you build that you know there's lessons and and growth and strength and all of the undesirable things that happen in our in our life yeah dude a hundred percent 
I mean, that's, that is something I often say is like, you're here talking to me right now, right? Yeah. Have you made it through every bad experience in your life? Yeah. A hundred percent. You have a hundred percent track record of getting through every adversity life has thrown to you. Yeah. Like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, that's a, that is a great place to start. Yeah. And so, you know, it allows you to have this unwavering belief in your ability to withstand any adversity, withstand any kind of painful experience, you know, like we can't predict the future that like, I don't know, um, a, a, a meteor could hit earth tomorrow and, you know, huge tidal wave sweep through the nation and like there's there's tragic things that can happen but like your ability to survive your ability to you know deal with anything that happens i mean like we all have it it's just can you recognize it can you can you believe in that can you see that then then there's like where is there any room for you know, anxiety or, um, again, thinking about anxiety is like this, this worry of bad things happening. Where, where is there any space if you really believe like deep down in your core that you'll withstand anything? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of so. what, what I would approach it as. And, and you, you, you can use people's direct experiences, like look at their past to your point earlier, like, yeah, I I did that challenging thing and made it through just fine. You brought up just now one of I I think the the linchpin of the whole thing, and it's one of these eternal truths that, unfortunately, the most simple answers are the ones that people just throw away and and gloss over. But it's three words you said. I don't know. Mm. that's the key to freedom right there is that you don't know. I don't right. know the future. I can't predict the outcome. It may go badly. It may go greatly. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And when you can actually accept that, which is uh, it's so <laughs> hard for people, right? To to And sometimes people can accept it in one area of their life, but not others. Like when you can accept that you don't know what's going to happen, Right. That is ultimate freedom. Mm -hmm. And then from that place of I don't know. Right. Then you can build and use all the tools of reframing. Well, I don't know how the answer is going to be. What do I know? Mm -hmm. I know that when I focus on anxiety, all of these negative things happen. Right. To my body physiologically, even at the, the early onset. I know when I focus on what could go right, I feel better. Yeah. Right. Well, OK, so I don't know the outcome. That's the eternal answer. And if I focus on the, the bad, I have a really shitty experience of life. If I focus on the good, I have a great experience of life. The answer is still the same. I don't know. But then again, that the side benefits we mentioned, if you focus on what goes right, it'll it'll at least change your trajectory towards the more probable positive answer right yeah that reminded me of a a tool maybe that we could pair with that concept is like the fact that people think there's three time frames past present future and anxiety is typically you're too too much in the future you're imagining things in the future right you're not present and But the reality is like there isn't three time frames it's only now and not now like anytime you're having anxiety you're in the future or the past your mind's in the future or the past you're in not now right like so if you just practice being in the now because that's all we have really i think is what you're saying like we don't know what's going to happen outside of this present moment. All we know is the next moment and then the next moment. And then we deal with it. Like we, we just deal with it. So right. it can be awesome and yay and celebrate. It could be terrible and all oh, that hurt. But we'll be, I'll be OK. We'll make it through. And there's lessons and growth and yay. Like, <laughs> right. So, yeah. It, 
it's funny if you listen to uh accounts of like animal attacks so like bear attacks right typically when the survivors are recounting what happened and how they were feeling and acting in the situation there's fear prior to the incident they notice a bear in the area right this is if they do notice it um there's fear right oh god now what what should i do right But once the bear starts attacking them and they're in the midst of it, they're like, all of my fear went away and I was just in action doing. I was covering my face. I was like rolling to my stomach. I was, you know, like all of the things you're supposed to do in, you know, in in those types of attacks. Yeah. And they're like, I wasn't scared while it was happening. Right. Then the bear leaves. Right. Then like they're laying there injured and then maybe if enough time goes by, fear sinks in again. Oh, am I going to die from my injuries? Is anyone going to come save me? Is But like to the now, not now, when you're in the now, when you're in the present, yeah, there's no, you're, you're just doing the thing. Yeah. Right? You're not focused on the outcome. You're focused on what you're doing. And right. when you're not in the present, you're in the not now, whether mm-hmm. it's dwelling about your past and what you should have done or, you know, uh, having anxiety about the future, like, you are not so another you know panacea yeah. of of this is i don't know what the future is so i'm going to focus on the present yeah yeah i love it that's a great example i haven't I haven't thought about that I, I can i can definitely relate to that when i think about just like painful experiences uh like when they happen like you just like you you're dealing with them and like if it's truly painful you're kind of almost overtaken by whether it's a physical pain or or an emotional Mm -hmm. pain and then after some time it subsides and you're like wow that kind of sucked but um uh, okay i'm alive i uh here's maybe what i took out of this here now i'm going to focus on the rehab or the path forward like i just I'm, i'm dealing with picking up the pieces and so like yeah, that, that, that's a good example. I, I didn't think of the, um, I don't know if I've ever heard that example, actually, of the, like the animal attacks, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I mean, it reminds me even of high school wrestling, like the nerves and anxiety up until when the whistle blows, right? Like I, I'm, I'm having tears, I'm holding back, my stomach's in knots, and then the ref blows the whistle after you shake hands and it's go time. And then you just do it. You just do the thing, (laughs) right? Like, yeah. And it's like, I know there's some psychological and physiological things about like the part of the brain you're using in action versus inaction, right? Like when you're in action, you actually are using a different part of the brain that's not filtering thoughts and feelings, right? It's so again, these little tips and tricks is like getting in action can kind of pull you out of that scenario. Yeah. countless examples of how this works yeah. in life. Love it. Well, I'll leave with one quote similar to what you brought up earlier of, um, you know, kind of stress versus anxiety. But if you can solve your problem, then what is the need of worrying? If you cannot solve it, then what is the use of worrying? That's awesome. Appreciate this perspective as always. Yeah, same with you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening or watching. Take care.